Iros 2025 just finished in Hangzhou, China. And as always, we got our eyes on the prize. Symbiotic robots, bizarre gadgets, modular bots, all serving out-of-the-box solutions for a massive humanoid rollout in the country. Strap in for the most comprehensive review of this year's international conference on intelligent robots and systems. Let's get it. First up, Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro, who showcased his ambitious Moonshot Goal 1. The main idea of the project is robots becoming human symbionts, basically a person's natural extension. Here's how Hiroshi envisions it. Imagine you're sitting at a home in New York or Tokyo, but you're simultaneously walking through a museum in Paris via your robot avatar. You could be teaching a class in Nairobi or caring for a loved one in a Beijing hospital. Professor Ishiguro is convinced that by 2050, the boundary between body and location will completely disappear. Anyone will be able Able to act remotely through a cybernetic avatar, working, studying, caring for family even if they're physically housebound. Ishiguro calls this a new way of being human. The body is the interface, distance is an illusion, and participation in society becomes accessible to everyone. When we free ourselves from the limitations of body and time, the true era of humanity will begin. What do you think of this concept? What would you do if you had avatars all over the world, huh? Let us know in the comments, but keep it PG. So effectively, what we do at Happily Robotics is um, this uh, 3D computer mouse. It allows you to move in 3D space and feel, physically feel, what, you, uh, what you're interacting with. And so in this particular case, we have uh, like a, a sphere, and it'll physically stop me from going any further. And what's fun with this particular simulation is I can actively adjust the physical properties of the simulation so I can feel different aspects of the, the simulation itself. IROS 2025 also hosted the traditional quadruped robot challenge. This isn't just for kicks. Many robot dogs are positioned as platforms for rescue services. The entire point of the challenge is robots entering disaster zones and performing tasks. This competition is an annual gauge of progress for these bots' stability and maneuverability. The course gets tougher every year. On top of that, there's plans in the works to develop scenarios where robots can complete an obstacle course only by cooperating with each other. Now, Engine AI emerged only two years ago from Shenzhen, but they're already showing dynamics comparable to Atlas with a price tag of around $12,000 for the basic platform. The company is gearing up for two releases, opening a cyberpunk-style retail robot store and holding the first real steel fight between their T-800 robots. In the summer of this year, the company secured almost a billion yuan or $140 million in investment from JD.com and Rockets Capital, announcing their readiness to move from prototypes to industrial-scale production. JD com is one of China's largest marketplaces, suggesting Engine AI's humanoids and others will soon be a commodity on e-commerce platforms. On to Dobot. This well-known collaborative robot manufacturer is also looking into humanoids. At IROS this year, they showed off Atom, an android that boasts the same key features as Dobot's manipulators. Action precision down to two thousands of an inch or 0.05 millimeters. Developers also claim the robot has human-like biomechanics, allowing it to save up to 42% of energy while walking. Besides this and other knickknacks, though, the real deal was the robot dog with the telling name Rover X1. Its unique design is that it has no head or tail, meaning it moves or operates equally well in both directions. It can also adjust leg movements to climb stairs. If this doesn't do the trick, then stick around. This wasn't even the strangest robot dog at the expo. Dobot's booth, meanwhile, also featured a manipulator that recognized and moved apples, as well as a pair of robotic arms for kitchen assistance. Though not confirmed, it's safe to assume they operate based on pre-written programs. And Sharpa Robotics promoted their Sharpa Wave robotic arm, which boasts 22 degrees of freedom, a massive array of tactile sensors, and developers claim unprecedented strength and speed. A clear trend at recent Chinese expos is that humanoids and the sophisticated robotic hands for them are often produced by different companies. No wonder Elon Musk says that hands are the most important and difficult part of a humanoid. Musk recently showed production footage of their hands to quell rumors that Tesla bot Gen 3 production was halted due to hand-related issues. Back at the expo, High Torque showcased their small mini pie robots. They stand out for being compact yet powerful, flexible, and fully functional for scientific research, education, and robot competitions. These nifty little things are about 2-1 or 65 centimeters tall, weigh less than 25 pounds or 11 kilos, and feature 26 degrees of freedom. They use a self-developed integrated servo drive module for precise motion control, and the mini pie features a modular design and open-source architecture. 
Moving on, Astribot performed their compulsory program at IROS this year. The killer feature of their flagship S1 is its high speed, up to 32 feet or 10 meters per second, combined with a thorough payload, up to 22 pounds or 10 kilos per arm. The company claims S1 can perform domestic tasks like pouring drinks, naturally, working with tools, and mimicking human actions. Astribot recently announced a partnership with SEER Robotics to help deploy over a thousand humanoid robots in industrial and logistics environments across China. We are on the edge of our seats for more videos and deets. If you have an inside scoop, shoot us an email. PND Botics, another fast-growing Chinese startup developing humanoids from scratch. Fundamentally, the reducers, motion modules, and control systems were all created in-house. In September of 2025, they formed a strategic partnership with Tiangong Engineering. Their robot, Atom, will now be integrated into the manufacturing process of car industry giants. Future tasks include assembly, testing, and replacing humans in hazardous zones. Interestingly, Atom performed exceptionally well at the first Robot Olympics held in China. The bot was the only full-sized humanoid athlete to successfully complete the 100-meter dash obstacle course, and it also won the Kung Fu Championship. In case you missed it, no, Unitree's G1 did not make it to those events. Um, so you can see like uh, that's uh, the robotic data acquisition device and we are doing the roomy design uh, grip but with uh, many enhanced features basically like uh, in two areas the first one is like uh, we are uh, doing the industrial grade so uh, engineering level and you are very durable and then the second one is like uh, inside of two sensors we have five sensors at our products so uh, we have like the tactile sensor and we have like uh, the IM user encoder and like uh, um, the voice and the tactile sensor. And then we can see that it's like a um, button here. So it's like a stop button. When, when I click, click the stop button, so you, you, you can see like a um, device start to recording. And I click that again. So one data set done. And then, so we can use this one uh, to our download our all the data sets in MCAT file. So MCAT file, you can change your model very easily. You don't need a real humanoid robot next to you or uh, using the real glass. And this one is the only device you can do the inner wow data acquisition. Uh, it costs like 3,000 US dollars. Next up, Cobot Act honestly presented the humanoids at their booth as dummies. Why? Because the company's products isn't robots, but soft, tactile sensors that can cover an entire android body. This quote-unquote skin guarantees safety for people around the robot. The reality is, to sell robots mass market, they can't just be useful. First and foremost, they have to be safe. Cobot Act sensors transmit touch data to a computer, allowing the robot to understand where contact is taking place. The sensors can also work preemptively, giving the robot a command to move away from a potential touch area before an impact occurs. And Booster Robotics showed off their new outfits at IROS 2025. The company's androids usually wear soccer uniforms, but their application isn't limited to competitions. Booster's goal is to create affordable and durable robots. They've certainly proven their wear resistance in the field. The company recently raised over 100 million yuan, which is $14 million, in investment for accelerated production and scaling. Rumors suggest the robots are in demand, although exact numbers are yet to be made public. Despite all of that, the $5,000 price tag definitely looks appealing. In contrast to Booster, Zerith isn't disclosing the price of their robots just yet. However, the company claims to have pre-orders worth about 100 million yuan, so again $14 million. Their H1 humanoids aren't designed for games or research. No sir, the company is trying to create a practical robot for hospitality and other sectors. Its main job would be cleaning bathrooms and restocking toiletries. Now, not the most glamorous field a robot can get, but hey, somebody has to do it. The first 500 quote-unquote workers were planned for delivery this year, but it's unknown if the company has indeed followed through. The robots, built on a wheeled base that also functions as a wet mop vacuum cleaner, can adjust their body height and adapt to different surfaces. Their range of tasks is abundant. Cleaning shower stalls, toilets, sinks, the works. Who knew bathroom attendants are going to be out of job that quick? Recently published footage shows the robot moving around a room, vacuuming the floor, and then neatly discarding the waste into a trash can. Developers claim this is all done autonomously with without human assistance. Future plans include teaching the robot to deliver towels to rooms and possibly perform light broom cleaning. Let's just hope they don't use the same robot for cooking. And Kepler Robotics, which recently started out on its journey into mass production, also had a presence at IROS this year. The company announced that the small batch production of the K2s began on August the 4th with a plan for about 100 units this year, primarily for car manufacturing assembly lines and education, with a price tag of almost $35,000.
On to Linkerbot now. This Beijing company was busy promoting their robotic hands at the conference this year. For example, in the Linker Hand series, each finger has up to 7 degrees of freedom and the entire hand has an astounding 42. This might be a record. The hand can pick up tiny parts, rotate nuts and bolts, assemble complex objects, and even repeat human movements with near lifelike dexterity. The startup is also advancing tactile technology, hoping to develop electronic skin and integrate cameras into the fingers for precise tactile feedback. According to the company representative, Linkerbot already holds about 80% of the Chinese smart manipulator market and produces over a thousand units monthly. This kind of momentum is rare even for China. The hands are used in labs, on assembly lines, and for training neural networks. Get this, we found a truly unusual exhibit at the Huzhou Institute booth. Developers presented JetRob, jetpacks for humans and robots. Chinese sources say the jetpacks can reach a top speed of 60 miles or 100 kilometers an hour, climb to an altitude of 5,000 feet or 1,500 meters, and take off without a run-up. These bad boys are fueled by kerosene and diesel fuel. The institute claims the project is based on years of work in light flight platforms and positions it as near Iron Man's suit. However, it's one thing to attach a robot to a jetpack and quite another to teach it to control it, maintain correct posture in flight, etc. There's a project about this involving the iCub robot. If we get enough likes or comments, we'll do that one too. What do you guys think? You let us know, folks. Show us your love. Now, Roki presented a simple and visually amusing telerobotic control system for humanoid at their booth. The startup has a wheeled humanoid robot called Helios. Developers say it features multimodal perception. The robot assesses position, navigates by vision, and uses teleoperation. Helios also has laser slam navigation, allowing it to move autonomously and make decisions in complex environments. With 42 degrees of freedom, Helios is mobile and agile, equipped with torque sensors in the wrists and 7 degrees of freedom joints. But what got most attention was the intuitive teleoperation system, which everyone at IROS was invited to try out. Robot control systems were abundant at the conference this year. Take this one from Spirit AI, for example. Everything related to humanoids and their application is developing rapidly in China. It feels like every company with a good idea and a proper team gets millions of yuan in investment. Spirit AI, for instance, recently secured 600 million yuan, roughly $84 million, and the startup system is based on a combination of control and artificial intelligence. The operator shows an intention, and the robot interprets and executes the action. The company is already preparing small batches of their Moz 1 humanoids, testing them in partnership with JD.com. The next step is launching pilot projects in logistics centers and showrooms. Moving on, Deep Robotics brought the Lynx M20 robot to the conference this year, which recently acted as a cameraman during a soccer broadcast. Considering the robot can reach speeds of up to 11 miles or 18 kilometers an hour, perhaps it will replace camera crews at the Summer Olympics in LA so they don't have to overexert themselves. Deep Robotics also recently entered the humanoid race and unveiled the DR02. The robot can walk at human speeds, climb stairs, hills with a slope of up to 20 degrees, and carry loads up to 22 pounds or 10 kilos. Fun fact, it's well protected against both dust and water and can operate at temperatures of negative 4 to 130 Fahrenheit or from negative 20 to 55. Celsius. The humanoid robot from Liju Robotics, also presented at IROS, recently made history in China as the first robot torchbearer at the National Olympic Games. The robot ran a 100-meter dash holding a 3.5-pound or 1.6-kilo torch. Their Quavo robot supports 5GA technology, allowing it to instantly receive data and commands. Liju's robots may not look the most polished, but the company has already received around 1.5 billion yuan or $200 million in funding, and it's collaborating with Huawei on AI and China Mobile on 5G. Tech. They're currently working towards launching mass production of their products. Exciting times we live in, folks. Now, the strangest robot dog at Iris was shown by Direct Drive Tech this year. Their new D1 is the first of its kind, a modular robot where each part can function as a separate machine. The company's bots have always been known for their unique stability and all-terrain capability. Now, they can connect and disconnect to perform tasks. For example, if four modules combine into a tracked unit, they can transport cargo weighing up to 220 pounds or 100 kilos. Separately, each segment lifts up to 55 pounds or 25 kilos and can work for over five hours on a single charge. The target niche for these robots is outdoor inspection and equipment transport requiring flexibility and endurance. Instead of a specialized robot for every task, the D1 promises one platform that transforms as needed for a cost of $14,000 for just two modules. Another notable android, Tiangong Ultra, from a company named Humanoid. It's famous for winning the first ever humanoid robot marathon, and boy, did it want to remind everybody about it. In its signature shirt, it was jogging on a treadmill. 
By the way, it won the marathon not only on time, but also for its step design, endurance, and technical solutions. Tiangong Ultra uses an algorithm that mimics human running gait, optimizing stride length, force parameters, and balance. If you haven't already, check out the marathon video by following the link in the card. And Aggiebot, a regular at all tech expos this past year, decided to surprise the public with a new skill. The robot can now use a weapon, specifically a bow. A human still has to load the arrow though, so take it easy. What's more interesting is another company innovation, the Link Craft System. This platform teaches robot movements, fast and easy, no special equipment required, just record a dance or any movement on video, and AI gets the Aggiebot X2 to effortlessly reproduce it. Aggiebot is also advancing fast robot learning with Launchier System. This tech technology can teach a robot new actions in a matter of tens of minutes. The company is actively building its own training dataset and hopes to surpass Tesla and figure in releasing useful robots. Do you think they can pull it off? Let us know in the comments. Also, Magic Lab brought Magic Bot and its robotic pet, Magic Dog, to the exhibition. The company recently claimed to have deployed an army of humanoid robots at a Chinese factory working in a real production environment. According to their press release, they perform sorting, inspection, part transfer, and interact with each other and other humans. Moreover, this is claimed not as an experiment, but a full-fledged pilot implementation. Magic Lab uses proprietary intelligent perception and coordination modules. Each robot is equipped with sensors, cameras, and a multimodal AI system. This setup reportedly ensures object perception and safe interaction with workers. The company now aims to expand the project and create a commercial platform for factories where humanoids will become part of a standard production process. The future has practically arrived in China. Also spotted at IROS was a new soft domestic robot from Fourier Intelligence. The CareBot GR3, standing 5'5 5 5 or 165 centimeters tall and weighing 150 pounds or 71 kilos, has 55 degrees of freedom, which should be enough for a companion or home assistant. Soft body robots are becoming a thing now. Both 1X and Figure have put knitted covers on their robots. But while the 1X cover is removable and washable, the upholstery on the Figure 03 is still unclear. If your child runs into the robot and spills juice on it, say, that could be a real problem. The GR3 seems to have the same issue, perhaps even worse. All the robot surfaces are potentially stainable, and the fact that it's pleasant to touch only complicates the situation. What do you think about the practical side of this, folks? Does a robot need a suit, or is it better without one? And finally, Unitree brought their sensational new H2 robot to the conference, but unfortunately, it stood modestly behind a barrier. We also haven't seen public, dynamic demonstrations of their previous novelty, the R1, at any of the exhibitions we went to, and we've been to plenty. The G1 takes the heat for everyone, though, and despite its agility and resilience, the robot's reputation is slightly tarnished. A recent viral social media video clearly shows that robots are not yet ready to enter our homes, or perhaps we are not ready for them. What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments, subscribe to the channel, like our videos, and check out our socials for more from the world of high tech.